Did you know the state of Utah, their legislature, actually refused to criminalize satanic ritual abuse? This and so much more on today's Tree of Liberty Society program. This might sound extremely bizarre, but yes, we're going to be getting that. Stay tuned to the end of the program. We're going to be talking about how the Utah State Legislature refused to criminalize satanic ritual abuse in 2024. If you have not seen our previous reports on satanic ritual abuse nationally as well as in the state of Utah, please go to the Tree of Liberty Society.com and search for SRA or satanic ritual abuse. Uh, the background information is going to be very helpful to what we cover today. Now, again, this is a very much um, a viewer discretion is advised. This is a heavy topic. I will attempt to be as um, uh, delicate as possible. I have uh, I have spent uh, you know just years looking into satanic ritual abuse. I've covered the the false claims of satanic ritual abuse as well as what we know to be true and what those that have investigated it and have given positions to investigate it have said. And, um, and there is legitimate claims because people have admitted it and people have confessed to it. And we have, um, we have, uh, witnesses from very much different backgrounds that are telling the same exact story. They don't have, they don't have any connection whatsoever, but they're telling the same exact story about the same exact people. Um, in the other reports and in the and in the show notes, I will sh- I will give you links to other um, documents and other um, uh, books that you can read to learn more on you know get more in depth on this subject. I have personally read uh, hundreds of pages of uh, victim statements on satanic ritual abuse. It's horrific, and the people involved in it are disgusting and uh, should be stopped immediately. But there are several updates on what's happened that shows how involved and how supported satanic ritual abuse is within the government at every single level. We will get into and now share with you some recent developments in David Hamblin's case and his ex-wife's case of being, um, they were the only two arrested. So two years ago, I did a report on David Levitt, the former Utah County attorney, uh, county attorney uh, with so you, not Utah State, not the Attorney General, but the county attorney in the county of Utah. Uh, the, that can be confusing, I think, if you're not from Utah. Uh, but he was the county attorney and um, the dist- kind of like a district attorney in other areas. And um, he, was, he came forward with this. I'm just going to do a recap, but you should go in uh, more in depth in one of our previous reports. Came out with nobody publicly saying that he had done this, but coming out and saying that he had not uh, uh, cannibalized children and, and other you know, things that, uh, that, that he was uh, responding to. And uh, this was a part of a, uh, the Utah County Sheriff and his candidate that he wanted to be the new uh, county attorney uh, were reopening a case or making public the idea that they were reopening a case um, investigating satanic ritual abuse charges from the 90s. And uh, hundreds of people came forward afterwards and uh, told their story, gave victim statements, in addition to the hundreds of victim statements that have been given throughout the years on individuals and actions regarding satanic ritual abuse and other ritual abuse. And um, so the only, there were only two people that were actually charged after all of these people you know, came forward. And the, this politically, I, I believe, even though... It, it appears to me to be insiders fighting each other because what we can see here is that the sheriff's department just killed any investigation um, beyond the the scapegoat of Hamblin. And now even this Hamblin case is disappearing. Hamblin will not see the, you know, a jail sale. So the Salt Lake Tribune, Utah County ritualistic sex abuse case in limbo. A recent court of appeals order means there's no prosecutor right now to handle the controversial and high profile case. Okay, this is about satanic ritual abuse, but look at what the charges that Utah County uh, throws at them. It is not about satanic ritual abuse. They want to make it, they, they want to move 
it away from. Just kind of, you go back to Monica Lewinsky and Bill Clinton. Originally, the case was all about selling secrets to China and treason, whereas the media needed to switch it over to uh, lying under oath about Monica Lewinsky. Now we have in this case, it's really about satanic ritual abuse, but they're going to lessen it and say, oh, it's, this is simply a one, a one off, just some pervert out there sexually abusing people with his ex-wife. Okay. So no one wants to prosecute a high profile ritualistic sex abuse case, except Utah County. And now that Utah County uh, has been banned for a second time in handling it. The controversial prosecution is an indefinite limbo. Okay. So this case with David Hamblin and his ex-wife, they, it's, there's not, they will, they are out free and they are not in jail and they are not being sentenced, even though we have many people. And in fact, so even though we have the same people identifying, uh, Hamblin, identify many others, including David Levitt, who refused to prosecute this case and said that it was debunked, said that there was nothing to it in one instance. And then another instance, he describes how it's done and then laughs about it. But the county attorney and the sheriff don't press charges against David Levitt. And now David Levitt is in Scotland, uh, living in a, uh, a castle that he was able to buy for several, you know, for over a million dollars. So, and then now nobody supposedly, you know, Utah County has been banned from prosecuting even the Hamblin case. Uh, so this was uh, dredging up a years old unverified witness statement that accused Levitt and 14 others of cannibalizing young children and participating in a ritualistic sex ring. There are many people accusing him. And so that, that we're going to talk about too, is what they are. Another distraction that David Levitt is using is saying, that it's only about this one person who was accused of raping someone that's saying that he's a cannibal. No, there are many witness statements. And, you know, the Tribune, of course, wants to say that these are unverified. Well, guess what? You know, most accusations that we see of rape or of um, uh, other just sexual abuse is unverified. And so it takes, you know, the collection of evidence and uh, being able to gather witness testimony. And sometimes in a lot of cases, it comes down to there is only witness testimonies. And if several people witness the same, that the saying that the same thing happened, then a jury has to decide, does the preponderance of that testimony uh, merit a, a, a guilty verdict? And so it's not just about unverified. There are lots of times where there is no way to verify something besides witness testimony. And so the article continues on that, uh, they want to prosecute the only two people who were eventually charged. Now, isn't that amazing? Only two people after, out of hundreds that have been named, only two people have ever had child charges filed against them. Former therapist David Hamblin and ex-wife Roselle Stevenson. The decision has thus far left Hamblin's case, which has been offered to and rejected by other prosecutors without anyone assigned to take to take it to trial. So the judge, you know, right, is uh, saying that the only people that were willing to take this to trial are banned from taking it to trial, and everybody else somehow does not want to take this to trial. It's amazing, with, even with all kinds of witness uh, testimonies, and even uh, the fact that there are other, um, wit there, uh, there's actual physical evidence in the Jacob Hamblin uh, situation. Not Jacob, I'm sorry, David Hamblin. And um, we go here. The charges in both counties were originally filed in Juab County uh, by Juab County attorney Ryan Peters to avoid a conflict of interest. But he's off the case now following his appointment to become a juvenile court judge. So there actually was another attorney that was, you know, supposedly willing to. Yeah, he's the one that uh, originally filed the charges. And now he got promoted to being a judge. And so he can't prosecute the case anymore. So isn't that interesting? The only people that are willing to supposedly willing to bring forth at least this one case are either, you know, promoted. And so they can't uh, prosecute the case anymore, or they're denied the ability to prosecute the case. It's just crazy. So then we go on. The article says many Utah County employees have had public and personal feuds and vendettas 
against Levitt, Petro wrote in a court filing, asserting that the prosecutor's office is still reeling from the effects of having David Levitt at the helm. So this is one of the reasons that they're giving of, of why the Utah County cannot prosecute this case is because they have a vendetta against David Levitt. Well, if the only person being prosecuted here are Hamblin and his wife or ex-wife, what does this have to do with David Levitt? How can this be a vendetta against David Levitt if there's no connection between David Levitt and the Hamblins? And if there is a connection, then why isn't Levitt being prosecuted and being allowed to go off um, with these open charges, being, you know, these open accusations being made against him and nobody's looking into, allowed to go off to Scotland to go live in a castle, uh, live out the rest of his days in a castle. So, um, and so that's right now what we see here. This first step is we have the entire judicial system conspiring together to protect these people that have multiple witnesses testifying that they were satanic, ritually, satanically ritually abused by these individuals being protected, making sure that this doesn't even go to trial to say, Hey, is there any evidence? It'd be great. You know, Hey, if there's no, if all of the evidence is brought forward and a jury is allowed to hear all of the evidence and they say not guilty, you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes if, and so, but that's not even being allowed to happen. So now I think it's important to look at this case right here, a follow-up interview with David Levitt, where uh, he's interviewed by uh, this uh, British or uh, I guess British uh, English um, news channel. And this is really important and relevant information. When we go back to one of the victim statements and what they said about David Levitt, this is really relevant to what we're going to be talking about. This victim said Rosie and David Hamblin often called David Levitt the conspirator. From what they said, people in this role are assigned to attack anyone who may be a threat to the group by starting rumors, planning false information and evidence that would take down anyone who is against the groups. They send people to bug houses, send threats, watch, listen, and gather information. Now, this is not only relevant to what I'm talking about here with what um, is going on with the, this article in this English newspaper, but what specifically has happened to me and the Tree of Liberty Society for the past couple of years since we started covering this story. His job is to start rumors, plant false information, and evidence that would take down anyone that is against the group. He says, we couldn't let Nicholas Rossi stop us buying Dream Scottish Castle. And so in this article... It's, uh, you have David Levitt saying, without question, I lost the election in part because of Nicholas Rossi. The larger picture is the American criminal justice system is on fire in dysfunction. I had the choice of whether I wanted the headline to be that I was accused of being a cannibal or whether I wanted the headline to be something a bit more palatable. What? So he wanted to control the narrative and instead of making it a bit more palatable, he focuses on the fact that I'm not a can I'm not a cannibal. What a biz it's totally bizarre. It's this is not a rational person. This is not somebody that is um, is mentally there in the sense of a normal person. This is the way uh, maybe a cannibal I would say would respond to this. It says if you think through the allegations that he, meaning Rossi, has made throughout the uh, ex extradition case. The many levels of conspiracy that it would take to have that occur, they are as outlandish as cannibalism. So he's admitting that, hey, you know, this has to be a pretty big conspiracy that I'd have to be involved in uh, for all of this, you know, for the allegations to be uh, true. That they're just crazy outlandish. But you know what's what's you know what's funny is that he's focusing on Rossi, because Rossi was accused of rape. And so you can say, oh, he's just doing whatever he can to, you know, get himself off. Accuse, accuse me of being a cannibal, and that's why um, I'm going after him. But he's not the only one accusing him of this. You have witness statements. The people that are, you know, the same individuals and others that have talked about uh, uh, Hamblin, David Hamblin, are also talking about David Levitt. And David Levitt providing or being provided by others uh, that are public figures that are providing David Levitt with 
children and talking about events and other, you have one guy that was providing the children and then you have another family that invited David Levitt over to his home to have his children perform for him. I won't get into it. It's just horrific. Um, if, if this is something that is of interest to you, um, in the membership portal at the Tree of Liberty Society, we have all of the victim statements that uh, you can go through and read for yourself. I don't think it's appropriate for this, but just just let you know um, what these multiple independent witnesses testify of is if if five percent of it is true, these guys need to be hung immediately. It's just it's it's disgusting. It's horrible, and it's multiple witnesses. But he wants to focus on this one guy that he can. Um, you know, try and he'll, he'll, he'll make people, you know, he'll call them crazy. And, um, and so who is this Rossi guy that they have, uh, that he's saying is just making up stuff to be able to, uh, get out of prosecution. So this, uh, this Rossi was a, uh, individual in the child protective services in the foster care system in Rhode Island. And he accused, you know, as a teenager, uh, accused them of being um, a part of um, shipping him off to home. In each of these different homes he would go to, he would be abused. And in fact, it came to a point. So what was his background, though? So he was actually not just, you know, he was actually making something of himself. He was a legislative page and was uh, working in the legislature. And he wasn't, you know, it's not just some kind of crack addict or something on the streets. He was a, a teenager that was working in the legislature. Now, some people would say, well, you know, isn't that goes back to the uh, the Franklin cover-up um, and their involvement with people in political office and in uh, Nebraska. What's interesting is that uh, that link to the Franklin cover-up, one of the states that he was transferred to and put in homes at that he was abused at was in Nebraska, which has that direct connection to the Franklin cover-up in the 1980s and 90s. And so, in fact, it got to a point where uh, he was a, a, a state page and he was... Um, <clears throat> He alleged that during the 15-month period, he was placed in a series of uh, night-to-night placements at temporary shelters around the state where he was repeatedly assaulted physically and sexually by employees and clients. So you had state agents as well as these foster homes that uh, were engaged in this abuse. So it goes back to what was going on with the Franklin cover-up of if he's being transferred from state to state and every single bill that was brought up to make it so you couldn't be shipped around to different clients. Clients, right? Is what the, it's just amazing what they would call them. Um, every single bill that would prevent that from happening was killed in their state legis in the Rhode Island legislature, and um, and eventually it came to a point where Rossi actually uh, they they paid him a large sum of money to uh, settle the lawsuit, and so uh, I think Rossi knowing that the people in power we're never going to go to jail he's like let me just get some money and 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 get out of here that i guess that would be my uh analysis of what happened and so um eventually it came to a point where so you, you have in 2020 and this is after he was accused of, of rape in utah um it says that this uh rhode island uh news outlet talks about how he was a child welfare advocate fighting cancer longtime advocate for the freedom of rhode island reform of rhode island Rhode Island's Department of Children, Youth, and Family Services has been diagnosed with late-stage non-Hopkins um, lymphoma, they've learned. And then we have here on uh, another outlet, just a, just a, a little while later, um, he, that they talked about how he died. So he changed his name. It was here, you can see it's uh, because he later changed his name to his birth father's last name. Uh, but it talks about how he died at 32. So, um, But what we find out later on is that... Uh, when he supposedly died, there were a lot of people in power that did not believe that he actually died. And I have, and um, and so we have here this case where you have a fugitive rape suspect, uh, Nicholas Rossi, slammed for cannibal slur on U.S. lawman. So they found him in Scotland. Actually, that he had faked his death and went to Scotland. Now, did he fake his death to get out of um, prosecution because he raped somebody? Did he uh, flee to Scotland and change his name and fake his death because? He was afraid of the satanic ritual abuse. Um, I think either, I guess, are plausible. Um, but it's, you know, it's pretty interesting that where does David Levitt go to go, to go buy a million dollar castle? He lives in, in Utah, right? He's from Utah. He is 
He has been elected as the county attorney for the county of Juab, as, as well as Utah, Utah County. But then he, him and his wife, they're like, hey, you know, after being accused of eating babies, let's go to Scotland and buy a castle. Just happens to be where they find Rossi, and they extradite him to the United States. Uh, pretty, pretty wild stuff. And so you, you have all of this going on where you have the courts covering, well, even back from that. You only have two scapegoats that are being charged, even though those same people, the same amount of evidence against Hamblin and his, his ex-wife, the same amount of evidence that led to those charges is behind Levitt and dozens, if not hundreds of others. But they're the only two that get charged, okay? And then you have the only, the only county outside of Utah County willing to press charges or to file charges is Juab County. And that county attorney is then uh, promoted to being a judge. And so now he can't prosecute the case. And the only county left to prosecute is barred from prosecuting. Refusing to go after uh, person, pro, uh, perpetrators, refusing to allow prosecution and making sure that anybody that would prosecute is removed out of the way. And then we have this connection between Levitt and uh, somebody that accused him of cannibalism and him going to Scotland to buy a castle to uh, be right next to him right as they uh, get him and have him extradited uh, to the United States. So these are some wild, wild uh, developments in the satanic ritual abuse case, at least in Utah. Now, I mentioned the very beginning of this report that even the legislature, so not only the judicial body, in the state of Utah, has protected perpetrators of satanic ritual abuse, but so has the state legislature as a body. In 2024, their legislative session, they meet uh, basically the, the first, what is it, uh, 90 days of the year, um, mid-January to mid-March, and uh, they introduced a, there was a, a legislator that we've talked about before, um, and I, when I heard about who had actually introduced this bill, I said, this is suspicious. Uh, but then I, I said, well, of, you know, uh, of, of course, it gives him cover because he knew it was going to go nowhere. We have H bill, so House Bill 196 in the state of Utah. And what this bill did was it was about sexual abuse amendments. And what it did was that it uh, creates the crime of ritual abuse of a minor. So right now in the state of Utah, there, it is not a crime. Ritual abuse of a minor is not a crime. That's insane, just all by itself. And so, they, and so this new bill introduces, says, okay, now ritual abuse is going to be a crime in the state of Utah. But, you know, so what, what happened to it? Well, in the, state, in the state of Utah, how legislation works is it goes and it gets assigned to a committee. The, 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 if you don't want a bill to go through, usually what they'll do is they just won't assign it to a committee. Uh, but this bill was assigned to the House um, Judiciary Committee, and it went there, and it passed basically unanimously. There was only one no vote. An individual I believe to be a complete pervert, Brian King from Salt Lake City, he has uh, said on radio that he, want, that, he, that he wants teachers and he wants strange adults to be able to talk to your children about sex. He's just a freak. And he was the one no vote on this bill. The, in, the entire committee, uh, besides him, you have Lizenby that uh, was a no-show, and then you have the other legislators that are on the committee, 10 other legislators on the committee that voted yes to get this bill through. So when that happens, you know, traditionally, um, you know, if it's a, a normal bill, it, it uh, would then, because it had such overwhelming support in this, in this committee, that um, they would then go to the House floor for a vote and then go over to the Senate and go through the same process. Uh, but you know what happened? Um, this And th this isn't like, oh, it was too late in the session. We couldn't do it. No, this is in mid-February. This is like only halfway through the session. You know how many bills get pushed through the last day of session? Even bills that never went through committee get passed on the last day of session. So there is no excuse why this bill that was passed overwhelmingly favorable in the committee wouldn't move forward. But guess what? It didn't. It didn't go anywhere. It sat dead. Never even went to the floor. So we have a bill here 
to make ritual abuse of children illegal in the state of Utah, and they refuse to even vote on it. So now, perpetrators of ritual abuse in the state of Utah still protected legislatively. You have the court system protecting people that have been charged with it, and you have, of course, the uh, the sheriffs and the district and the county attorneys in the counties across the state of Utah refusing to file charges against those that have uh, multiple witnesses, the same amount of evidence against them as Hamlin had when he had his charges filed against him. They are refusing to do so. So we have the government in the state of Utah, as we saw in Nebraska with the Franklin cover-up, um, refusing to do anything about protecting and holding those accountable that ritually abuse children and protecting the uh, this network of Satanists. Because, frankly, with the, uh, the testimony that we have of victim statements, this reaches every level of every power structure in the state of Utah. And so, of course, they are going to stand together. So this helps you to really understand what we're facing. This is, this is not just about, oh, you know, and, and this is what they do usually is they have, oh, Hamblin got arrested. So, you know, now, oh, this one off thing. And, you know, the perpetrators have been arrested. And now, look, almost nobody even remembers Hamblin was arrested and his wife were arrested, let alone remembering that, oh, yeah, maybe in the past there was something. But, obvi- it, you know, if it was if it was to go somewhere, um, somebody would have done something about it. No, they are protected every step of the way. We have this literal satanic conspiracy that has perpetrators protecting each other in their crimes. They are in positions of power to ensure that no one is. And, and so if these people are in positions of power and you look at every single level of government aiding this conspiracy, this tells you why we focus on the solutions that we do. Why you go through our uh, Tree of Liberty Society extremist boot camp. Why is it that we talk about how elections and um, and, and judges and suing and lawsuits and, um, and and all those different traditional methods of restoring liberty that you hear about in the corporate media and even fake alternative media is is a sham because this satanic conspiracy controls each of those levels of government and of course the media at every level they have combined together at every level to make sure that this does not go anywhere and that the uh, that the fellow conspirators are protected in their crimes they they work they, this is not like oh the people in government aren't a part of it no they are working together behind the scenes they are a part of these rituals behind the scenes and then the individuals in this conspiracy that are in the different branches of government and in media then make sure that nobody in this network is prosecuted and that these victims are uh, this this network of victims is allowed to flourish and expand and you think you're going to just I'm, I'm going to vote my way out of this. I'm going to make sure that, you know, I'm just going to vote harder next time. We need to understand the seriousness and the level of which the satanic conspiracy is engaged in the government and media um, apparatus, not only in the state of Utah, but nationally. Because if we don't understand that, we're going to be focused on the wrong solutions. If you want to learn more about those solutions, go to the tree of liberty society.com, pick up our trilogy of books, Invasion Volume 1 and 2, as well as Killing No Murder. You, and please share and spread this video and so that we can help more people wake up to what's really going on, who's actually involved, so that we can actually going on the offense, start going on the offense to take effective action to getting rid of this evil conspiracy, these evil conspirators, and restoring lost liberty. Please become a part of the solution. Join the Tree of Liberty Society. I'll see you next time. I'm Ben McClintock. Mm-hmm.